Okay. Good afternoon and thank you for being here today. As the U.S. Capitol building behind us moves towards reopening this week, we need to recognize that there are still two pandemics happening in our country. While we make significant progress as a country against COVID-19, the opioid and substance use disorder crisis worsens. This is true in every community across the country, no matter if it's urban, suburban, or rural. And just recently, the CDC estimated that between October of 2020 in October of 2021, more than 100,000 of our fellow Americans died by overdose. It's a single year record. In Virginia alone, we saw an 18% increase in overdose deaths last year. And since 2013, for nearly a decade, overdose has been the leading cause of unnatural deaths in the Commonwealth, far surpassing car accidents, and other accidents. Since my earliest days as a candidate for Congress back in 2017, I have had personal and heartbreaking conversations with far too many families who have been negatively impacted by substance use disorder and overdose. Many have lost loved ones and many are worried about their loved ones, worried that they may never escape the grasp of addiction or dependency. I have learned the stories of the loved ones who have been lost. I remember their names. I carry their stories with me. And one of those conversations, one of those stories was with Carrie Colvin, who's here today. Her daughter, Summer Barrow, was born on the 4th of July. She was energetic. She loved music. She loved to sing. And she brought joy to everyone around her. And Summer, like far too many Virginians, died of a fentanyl overdose in January of 2020. And amid this unimaginable loss, her mother, Carrie, has turned to advocacy. And I thank Carrie and her family for their commitment to taking action and for showing incredible compassion towards others who face similar circumstance. Today, I'm honored to lead legislation in Summer's name, and I'm honored to support the work of communities and the work of entire states including ours, Virginia, to combat addiction through prevention, through treatment, and through recovery services. With us today are Virginia law enforcement officials, recovery advocates, and community-focused organizations who understand the importance of this legislation. I want to thank them for providing hope to Virginians who haven't always found the right avenue for hope. I want to recognize the McShin Foundation, Rappahannock Rapidan Community Services, the Substance Abuse Addiction and Recovery Alliance of Virginia, the Rappahannock Area Community Services Board, and the Culpeper Police Department for joining us here today. You know, thank you, you know that individuals struggling with substance use disorders have worth, they deserve a federal response that recognizes their dignity. This legislation is a bipartisan, comprehensive package that responds with strength to the substance use disorder crisis. This package shows what it means to never give up while knowing the significant needs that still exist in Virginia. This legislation authorizes more than $900 million in investments through the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration. And this funding will bring stronger support to the fight against addiction and overdose epidemics in our communities. Our bipartisan bill reauthorizes a dozen grant programs to support time-tested, evidence-based pillars of prevention, treatment, and recovery. It represents a comprehensive and a long-term strategy that will reduce the rates of addiction, expand access to compassionate and effective treatment for those struggling with substance use disorder, and provide communities the resources they need to ensure individuals have a road to recovery. This bill supports our alternatives to opioids in emergency departments where too many patients first experience their struggles with addiction. This bill supports successful programs that treat addiction as a mental health illness and diverts individuals to treatment rather than locking them up in a jail and denying them and our communities future opportunities. This bill improves access to emergency treatment for overdoses and the bill supports training for healthcare providers to use naloxone and in this way, we will save more lives. We need to understand the major issues ahead. We know this challenge, this era-defining 
crisis will not disappear overnight, no matter the number of resources funneled towards combating the problem in the short term. But we cannot ignore this problem, this challenge. We cannot write off our fellow Americans who are at risk or refuse to raise awareness. Today, we are recommitting ourselves to being part of the solution. We are reminding ourselves that the path forward must include more access for more Americans to effective treatment and recovery programs. I want to thank my colleagues, Democrats and Republicans, who co-sponsored this legislation. Representatives Armstrong of North Dakota, O'Halloran of Arizona, and Salazar of Florida. I want to thank them for their partnership on this bill because this coalition is an example of how this issue transcends geographic boundaries and partisan divides. It touches us all. I'm going to introduce a number of individuals to speak and I'd like to begin by inviting Chief Chris Jenkins from the Culpeper Police Department in Virginia's 7th District to share his perspective as a law enforcement leader with 45 years on the department. Chief Jenkins. Thank you, uh, Representative Spanberger. Uh, we appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here this afternoon, as well as acknowledge the hard work that you've done uh, to sponsor this bill. Culpeper is a small community of probably about an hour and a half south of Washington, D.C., but yet I can tell you we face almost daily the effects of opiate and drug abuse and deaths. Our officers are at the front lines almost every single day responding to an emergency call where someone has overdosed. Hopefully, the officers will be able to respond and get there in a timely manner to administer naloxone, and which we have. We've saved so many lives to give someone hope that they can get the right treatment that they need. There's always hope when there's life. And for two years during the COVID crisis, we forgot that we were in a opiate epidemic. And now that we've sort of came out of this COVID crisis, the opiate epidemic is back again and it's full force. And having programs that can be supported for prevention and substance abuse is paramount to getting out of this opiate crisis. Again, I acknowledge all the folks behind me for the hard work that they're doing and the results of this bill and the money that it will fund programs will save lives. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Jenkins. I would like to introduce Brandy Williams, the Deputy Executive Director of the Rappahannock Area Community Services Board in Virginia. Thank you, Representative Spanberger. It is an honor to speak to you today in support of the Summer Barrow Prevention, Treatment, and Recovery Act. With more Americans dying this past year from overdose than any previous year, the time is now to make bold investments across all levels of intervention and treatment in the fight against the opioid epidemic. The flexibility of new as well as recommitment to previous funding streams allows local leaders to respond to the unique needs and challenges of their community. In Virginia, public funded behavioral support services has been underfunded for years. This legislation moves towards fully funded programming to support traditionally underserved populations across the Commonwealth with flexibility to respond to the unique needs of each community. For the Rappahannock Area Community Services Board, this funding would support efforts across the service continuum from outpatient to case management to detoxification services and residential crisis stabilization. Further, the funding supports expansion of evidence-based programming such as medication-assisted treatment, peer support services, and project link program for pregnant and postpartum women struggling with substance use. The act highlights the importance of services such as our PATH program in addressing social determinants of health, such as homeless, homelessness, in order to minimize their negative impacts on recovery. Flexible, sufficient funding would support locally driven prevention efforts such as mental health first aid, understanding adverse childhood experiences, and revive training to grow informed, prepared, and resilient communities. 
Just as the path to recovery looks different for each individual, so should the resources and treatment options available to them. The flexibility and funding provided by the Summer Barrow Act sends a clear message to our community, our friends, our brothers, our daughters, and all those who are experiencing addiction that they are not alone. We are committed and resourced to stand beside you. Thanks again for this opportunity to speak today as today in the halls of our nation's capital, hope starts here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Williams. I'd now like to invite Jim LeGraff from Rappahannock Rapidan Community Services in Virginia to share his comments. I want to thank the Congressman for inviting me today and her leadership on this very important topic. As the Executive Director of Rappahannock Rapid and Community Services, um, it is my obligation and to support the five counties in North Central Virginia of Fauquier, Culpeper, Rappahannock, Orange, and Madison counties um, as the safety net for those members of our community struggling with a substance use disorder or a mental illness. We are a community of suburban and rural neighborhoods in the be of beautiful farmland, rolling hills, and small towns at the foot of the Blue Ridge Mountains. We are also a region that has an adult suicide rate over 30% higher than the national and state average. We are also an area that has seen 47 fatal overdoses in the first nine months of 2021. I am particularly grateful for the scope of this legislation and its targeting of historically underserved population, including those who are homeless, and the willingness to allow local control of resources to meet our community's needs and identify emerging best practices. As an organization, we have seen firsthand the dramatic impact of flexibility and local use of resources when we opened the C Recovery Center in August of 2021. The Recovery Center opened on the ideal of eliminating barriers to support and services and reducing the stigma for those who are seeking needed help. The center is peer-led, cost-effective, and responsive to emerging community needs as was recently evidenced by the distribution of fentanyl test strips to those members of our community. Um, the C Recovery Center, even though it has only been open a very short time, is now seeing over 1,000 visits per month demonstrating the need for such services in our area. Again, I thank the Congresswoman for her leadership in sponsoring such, in sport, such important legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. LeGraff. Now I would like to introduce Carrie Colvin, Summer's mother, and someone who has never stopped fighting for Virginians like her daughter. I want to thank her for her courage, for her devotion to her daughter, and for inspiring so many people in our community. Thank you. Thank you and good afternoon. As you can imagine, this is an extremely emotional day for me and for my family who is also with me here today. So instead of speaking off the cuff, I'd like to read you something that I've written instead. My daughter, Summer Samantha Barrow, was born on the 4th of July in 1987. She was vivacious, witty, and sparkling. She loved music, animals, and most of all, her family. She did not think to herself as a child, oh, I want to grow up to be an addict. No one does. Her neck was broken in a car accident and she was given an opioid prescription for that pain. When she no longer had access to that drug, she turned to heroin. She told me that when you use heroin, you don't care about anything else. You don't care if you eat, work, bathe, or sleep. You just want more. I kept telling her that her nine lives were running out and she would say to me, don't worry, mom, I've got this, I'm not stupid. But addiction doesn't care about your intelligence or your intent. Summer struggled against addictions for many years. During her attempts at recovery, she often found it difficult, if not impossible, to get to treatment facilities due to lack of transportation and or funds. 
Recovery is difficult enough in the best of circumstances and is far more difficult when one cannot access resources. Summer did not mean to die. She simply wanted to get high and go about her day. She took a mixture of cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl and died almost instantly from the amount of fentanyl contained therein. She died alone in her home in January 2020. I, my husband, and my daughter found her body five days later. I will spare you a description of the horrors of those moments. But suffice it to say, the aftermath of her addiction has left us in a landscape of sadness that we've had to navigate without her. It is the loneliest place we have ever been. The hole she left in our lives is cavernous and will never be filled. It is our hope that with this act, others will be spared what we are going through. Summer would have been proud to be a part of something that will help others and that will offer viable resources to those who are struggling with addiction. Our family is honored to have Summer's name affiliated with this act. We thank Representative Spanberger, O'Halloran, Salazar, and Armstrong who have made this much needed legislation possible. I believe that if Summer could speak for herself, she would say to those suffering from addiction, don't let this happen to you. Please get help. Thank you. I want to again thank everyone who's here in support of this legislation, certainly all of the advocates who continue to do good work across Virginia, across the country. Uh, and I welcome any questions you might have about this legislation. It is quite straightforward. <laughs> All right.